So uh, let's just check out the leak. Uh, right back here in my uh, receiver gauge. Uh, let's get a look closer. So we are definitely losing refrigerant. And uh, look at the boat. So I'm gonna have to pump this down, get all of the refrigerant out of that, and replace that gasket. Let's just head around to the back of the rack. Here's our drop leg right there. This pipe here, right here in front of us. That's our drop leg. It's coming back from the condenser. Um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna close that drop leg, that valve, that ball valve, we're gonna valve that off, and uh, we're gonna force all of our refrigerant downstairs and up into the condenser coil and uh, we're going to get this thing here empty so I can replace that all right so I just closed the ball valve uh, we're gonna wait till this thing pump down let's see what the liquid level is right now all right so we're at 15 percent and uh we gotta let that thing pump down to zero. Once it pumps down to zero, compressors, everything will kick off. The rack's probably gonna go off on high head pressure because we're basically causing a restriction by closing that line right there. Our head pressure is gonna rise. Let's see where we at right now. We at 231, so not too bad. So let's just give it a little minute. All right, so all of my compressors just kicked off. Um, what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna head back here. We're gonna leave one of these open, one of these um, suction circuits, and uh, we're gonna valve off the rest of these ball valves. And um, we're gonna throw a couple of these circuits through hot gas defrost so we can uh, store a little bit more gas in our condenser. So let's do that and let's go from there. All right, so let's just check our receiver gauge right now, see if we pump down. All right, let's see. What is that? All right, so as you can see, we're down to zero. All right, so now that all my compressors stopped, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my liquid line, and also I'm gonna close my liquid line right here. That's a liquid header, actually. That's feeding our demand cooling. All right, so my gas is all clear, no vapor at all. We're gonna just take these bolts out. And we're gonna pull this out. so here's our liquid level receiver gauge I don't know if you ever seen one before but here's what it looks like that's just a float and goes right in the receiver and as long as there's liquid in there this thing will move up and down let's take a look at that gasket look at that pretty warm but also those bolts are pretty loose too, so. All right, so here's our newer gauge, digital. Um, this one has power, also signal, uh, 12 volts DC. Um, also, this is a cramping style. I have to put this float in there, then cramp it. And then what I wanna do is, I wanna put a bend in this, something similar to that because this is pretty long. Um, when you put this in there, if it's hitting this side right here, from that side, basically it's gonna be getting stuck. So you're not gonna be reading a true reading. So um, I brought a tape measure up here. I'm gonna measure the inside and uh, measure from the base to the tip of that, same way here. And i um, go try to get them to be a little bit close. And uh, we gotta make sure we cramp this down pretty good.
because you don't want this to fall off inside that tank. Um, look how big that tank is. Uh, it won't be pretty if that falls in the tank. So, all right. So I got my new receiver gauge together, all intact. So, like I say, you want to measure from this bulb to the base of this gauge. It's about 13 and 3 eighths. So, I got to stick my tape measure in the inside of here. Like I said, we would just want to measure from the back wall of this receiver tank to the front. From here, it's about 16 and a half. We was about 13, so we have plenty of room. Uh, when the float needs to go up and down, it shouldn't hit the side of the receiver. It shouldn't get stuck. So, let's go ahead and install the new one. All right, so before I put this in, I just want to show you where the gasket goes. The gasket is right here. Just gonna go slide that right in. All right, so as you can see, I got my new gauge installed. Uh, let's just open the lines. All right, so my battery is dead on my phone. I can't turn my light on, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit this with some soap bubbles and make sure that this thing is not leaking. Uh, so far, it's not leaking. I know you can't see it, but uh, we don't have any. Open leaks. that up. Let's fill our receiver tank up and go ahead and open up our liquid line. I was already getting ready to do it. We'll go ahead and open up our liquid line. We'll go open up our compressors, get our compressors running. Um, all right, so let's turn on compressor one. Hit that toggle switch. And uh, compressor should kick on. Also, uh, We'll just start them up one by one. Don't want to put too much load on. And um, so far, I only have one circuit open up. That's this one here. We're gonna open these up one by one as well. All right, so I got all my compressors on. Everything's running. Um, also, I open up the rest of all these ball valves. Um, when you open these up, you want to open them up one by one. Um, because we had the case off for a long time. You know, you have a lot of liquid sitting downstairs in the cases. So the moment you open this up, you're gonna have a whole bunch of liquid coming back. So you wanna open them up one circuit at a time to give the rack time to adjust. Uh, sometimes you, you hear the compressor start making a lot of noise or your amp draw will go up. If you're checking amps, I mean, you're taking on a too much liquid. Uh, so always open these up one by one. All right, so let's just check our circuit. Uh, where we at? Rack one. As you can see, rack one, we had uh, nine PSI. So we pretty much pulled down all of my cases out of alarm. Uh, we got one case right there, 74, that's in defrost. But um, everything's pretty good, so we're gonna wrap it up for now.